tell us about auditioning and getting the role for Shanak. Shanak. Well, that was very interesting. I remember auditioning going in for the reading. Um, and I didn't ever, you know, I have this kind of mentality. Once I go in, I give it my all. I give it my best, you know, uh, job, my best audition. And then I walk out and I just try to forget about it. I don't want, I don't want to know because I don't want to keep thinking about, oh, did I do it right? Did Dwelling it on it, yeah. yeah. I can't dwell on it. I walk yeah. away and I just go like, well, if it's meant to be. Correct. You know, yeah. You know, and, uh, and then I got the call and I was like, oh, Wow, that's so exciting! And at that play, at that point, you know, um, traveling with so I'm such a keen person to travel, and I had seen Stargate, and I was a huge fan of it. All so, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, to me, sci-fi is not unrealistic. Okay, I know people are like, oh no, it's like, nah. Uh, Stargate's very possible. Uh, a lot of things very, very possible. And sometimes I think these shows imitate life. Yeah. <laughs> In a, you know, and you start digging, you find out a lot of information. You go, hmm, okay, maybe that's where this idea is coming from. So it's, to me, it's not far fetched. And um, yeah, so when I got the call and I, I flew to Vancouver, I, it was super exciting for me to to be there. It, it was just you know, to suddenly step into the show, and also that show had been going for quite a while at that point. Yeah, that's always the most. Uh, nerve-wracking if you step into a show that's already has a rhythm you know so you come in as like a one day a, a one guest star episode you know to f get into the flow but right away and uh it was really funny because my first you know episode peter de louise directed and he's such a prankster it was hilarious he's a great was, guy so funny but he's crazy <laughs> 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 but we had so much fun and all the cast was, and the crew, they were so nice and so welcoming. And so it was, I really had a great time on that show. Did Chris mm -hmm. help you understand who the Jaffa were as a people? Did you infer that through the script? Who, who did you go to, to figure out what kind of a creature this, this person was? Well, yeah, that's a good question. It's going back so far. I believe Chris helped me and, and explained to me who the Jafal were and, um, you know, exactly what the symbiote was and how it all works. And, you know, because if you're not following the show every day, you don't, it's like it's a whole world you have to step into and recreate. Mm -hmm. See, how do I fit in? How does this work? Yeah. So I definitely did a, a bunch of research, watched some episodes, try to figure out how I would fit into this. And, um, any time, and they're also very good with with guiding you, you know, and telling you like the names. You have unusual spellings. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's the little things that make a big difference. Yeah, you know, like who the Tokor were as a race, and you know why. You know why the like the 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 mythology of the Goa'uld. You know, dated. Uh, it was retro, reverse engineered from the feature film, but I mean, we had. At up until Crossroads, never had any idea that you could talk that the Jaffa could talk to their symbiotes, or at least commune with them and and hear what they were saying. And that was really, really kind of creepy. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's true. I think that uh, in a way, for me, it was uh, very interesting because it's like that same basic idea of a human being being able to get into the silence of the mind and hearing the intuitive voice of the of the of the heart you know of the mm -hmm. spirit so uh, not that the, i'm not talking about the <laughs> jafar being mm -hmm. that but you know what i'm saying it's right. so i kind of used it in that sense you know for the character for me that was the parallel you know were you surprised at the twists at the end were you aware of um the the twist before you got to it reading the script all the way through or were you um not expecting it to go the way it did where tanith was was faking all along <laughs> well As you know 
Well, you know, when you come in on, on, a, on a guest star on one episode, you know pretty much it, you're going to get killed because... <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's usually, it's, it's usually, sometimes it's not, and then it's like a couple, unless you're becoming a regular on the show, right. but usually, you know, when, when you're the guest star and they hire you for one episode, you're either going to die or you're going to go away somewhere. And <laughs> chances are, because I usually play villains, I'm always thinking, well, this character's probably going to die, you know, and uh, sure enough, she did, And uh, but it makes for the drama. You know, makes for the twists and the turns, so it it, it, it feeds the show, and, and I think that's. I mean, I would have loved to stay on. This yeah. is true. Well, you know, and we'll talk about your second appearance, you know, an unexpected one at that in just a moment. I have had the privilege of knowing uh, Christopher, uh, really, really getting to know him and, and s spend time with with him, uh, just discovering his humanity. And if you want to talk about someone who was just pure light and energy um it is that man i could not imagine getting th trying to get trying to get through scenes with him <laughs> he was very funny and he was a big prankster between him and peter it was just constant i i, I think i've told the story many many times and i think my i think my first scene i don't remember if it was the one where i stepped through the portal mm -hmm. through stargate or if it was when I was dead. It was one of those two. Oh, geez. But I, yeah, but I remember... ...and corrected on all of this because we're going back a long time now. <laughs> I stepped through, the, you know, and I got the things and, you know, we rehearse it and then Peter DeLuise goes, and now, with fire in your loins, you look over and you see Tilk. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. With a fire in my loins, I've been directed in many ways. <laughs> no one has ever told me to look at somebody with fire in my loins. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, okay. That, well, that sounds about right. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> yeah, or when I'm dead, and they, Christopher Judge, I'm lying like this, and we'll dead, and he's got the feather, and he's like, <laughs> around my nose. I, I wanted to uh, see how that is. Uh, I want to jump to one of the fan questions earlier. Raj wants to know what were the differences between the the uh, the, the sets of SG One and Voyager? Because I've heard some stories that like the the Voyager sets were like very like sp sp they were very aware of the internal mythology going back decades and seasons of multiple shows and and uh, like a level of of intensity that I can't imagine was on the Stargate sets, or was it very similar? Wow. Well, you know, firstly, that's a really a specific question. When you come in, like as an actor on a show, and you only come in for one episode, right? It, it, you you don't you're so concerned with doing everything that they want to make it okay. work. You know, I I can't. I wasn't really focusing so much on wh whether it was you know following some kind of a history with the show okay. or the sets. I know they were beautiful and I know they were all very well done. And uh, I remember when I worked on another show, on, on, uh, on uh, Star Trek, uh, a, a friend of mine came over to visit and they wanted to go into the main room, you know, and sit in the oh, chair. Oh, the bridge, yeah. Yes, and sit in the bridge, you know. And, and up to that point, I hadn't even thought of taking a photo and sitting in the bridge, you know. But it was his dream to stand oh. where the Borg regenerates. And so, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. The Borg sets were standing there too, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I got a picture on the bridge because of him. But I, when you're in that mode of working, right. it's like you're not paying attention to those details. You're doing you are, your job. You're doing your job. Yeah. You know, they do their job amazingly well. Right. All I, have, all I have to focus on is, am I doing my job well? Am I making this character believable? Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.